Hi everybody, welcome back to Daisy. And in this video, we're going to be looking at the newish CFG underground triggers.json file that you can now find in your Livonia uh, servers um, and which you can use on Chernerus and other servers as well to create dark areas. So let me kind of show you. So I've kind of set up this little kind of test environment. So as we go inside this hangar on the north uh, east airfield, but if I strafe in sideways, just look at the level of light look at the on the ground see how it's getting a little bit darker there it gets a little bit darker there it goes completely black there in fact let's turn on our torch and then we get into this area here which is completely dark as if we were underground this is a cool little feature obviously featured in the Livonia bunker down at Dambog but we can use uh, this on any areas of the map too it's important to remember that this um, technique is just affecting the local view of our character in a particular small space and it's just saying look depending on the time of day obviously um, as long as there's no other external light sources like my torch set a level of darkness around my character now the thing about this is that it, it's almost like someone's thrown a blanket over your character because what I should really be able to see here is if, if I look back towards the entrance of the bunker, uh, entrance of the hangar, we should be able to see it in bright daylight, shouldn't we? But we can't. Um, in fact, if I turn on my torch, I'll make sure we're going in the right direction. And then as we run towards it, you'll see it suddenly appears. Similarly, when we look towards the far end of the, um, of the hangar, that should be in darkness. So it's kind of, I don't like to use the word, it's a, it's a little bit of a trick, but it kind of is a little bit of a trick. It's kind of a workaround that they've created, a very clever workaround that works very well. What this means is that when you're designing bunkers and generally dark areas, dark areas that you want to have, you need to bear in mind that you don't want to break immersion by having situations where players can see things that they shouldn't be able to see and vice versa. And this normally involves having angles and dog legs and corners if you think about the Livonia bunker when you go into it at the uh, the main entrance end with the, the door big door that opens with the flashing light the way that you actually get into the bunker is you go through that little office area on the right and it gradually gets darker and then you go through the door and then it's pitch black round to the left so it stops you having a long line of sight from what should be a dark area to what should be a light area and that fools you into thinking that you're going into a darker area kind of naturally you know where shadows are making the darkness instead of instead of a switch so what we have here is basically we've got we've got three areas we've got um, what we call the outer trigger area here which is this small area then we've got this inner trigger area here and then we've got the final if I turn the torch on the inner trigger area here but let's, let's have a look at the actual code and you'll kind of start to understand a little bit more about it. Let's go right here. So, here we go. Now, on your server, uh, this is my local server, but if you go into the mission files, in Enoch, which is the Livonia server, you'll find CFG underground triggers.json. It's worth opening that in a text editor and having a look at it. And then when you go into your Chernerus uh, server, there will be a CFG underground triggers, but it will be basically be empty. Um, and the way that you can understand how these work is, if you go to Bohemia Interactive's wiki, there is a document all about it, and I'll put a link to the description below the video. And it explains what these these triggers do, and it and it shows you the uh, the layout that you need for them as well. So the three sort of triggers we've got outer, transitional, and we've got inner. And they give you this rather nice picture as well. And this is a simplified version of the uh, bunker, a dam bog. And so you've got the outer trigger there. So that in my um, hangar, that's the outer bit. That's the little bit there. And then you've got your transitional bit. So that was actually the quite large bit that I had in my hangar, where it got darker and darker. And then these inner bits, these are the bits where it's pitch black. So this is inside the bunker. And as you can see, these are all rectangles because these triggers that we are creating are rectangles because if you think about the structures that you're most likely to be putting these triggers into to make them dark or lighter it's going to be in buildings isn't it and things like that so you are going to be building um, rectangular spaces now on this document on their wiki if you just slowly go through it and compare it to the uh, cfg triggers.json um, cfg underground triggers.json file from the livonia 
server, you'll kind of start to understand how it works. So as they say, so an outer trigger, this is this is one that is normally found, you know, outside of the area that you want to get, um, uh, where it was going to start to get dark when you go inside. Um, and this has a position um, in coordinates, an orientation, and then you have the size, so the rectangular size. So it will be um, length, width, and then height in the middle. And eye accommodation, that's how dark it is. So one should be, um, if it's daylight, you'll be able to see everything. So you have that on the outside. And then the, the, the inner one, which we'll jump to now, is basically exactly the same, but you have an eye accommodation of zero, which means it's pitch black. So if you can imagine at the at the beginning of the tunnel, you'd have the outer, and at the end of the tunnel where it's pitch black, you have, you have the inner. And then the transitional ones are the ones that are in the middle. Now these start off similar, so you have a position for it, and you have a size for it, but then you have the breadcrumbs. Now these are very important. So each of these breadcrumbs sets its own eye accommodation. So as you're moving through the transitional trigger, the transitional rectangle, these slowly make it darker and darker and darker. <coughs> Excuse me, got a bit of a cough at the moment. And what I really recommend you do is if you look at the CFD underground triggers from Livona, you'll see at the top, you've got the, um, this is the uh, outer trigger just outside the door where the eye accommodation is one. And then we have this, this transitional trigger, this, this all the one here, like this. And you can see for that very small area when you're moving through that office before you go through the door and it gets pitch black, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You've got nine breadcrumbs that are slowly changing it darker and darker and darker in a way where it's not just like someone's turned a light switch off, but you're slowly moving into shadow. And this is why I think when you are laying out your um, your triggers um, for the effect you want to have, there's going to be a lot of experimentation. There's going to be a lot of changing things and seeing if things work. And especially one of the things you're going to have to look out for is, is kind of um, spillover of your area because the beauty with the underground... Um, bunker in Livonia is because it is underground they don't have to worry about the devs don't have to worry about having an area that spills over onto the surrounding area because it's underground you can't get to it but here for example I haven't made my calculations exactly right and if you come down the outside of the hangar to this area just about here there is spillover from my um, trigger that's inside See, it spills over outside the hangar only a little bit but enough for if you were playing it you would go hello what's that all about so bear that in mind you're gonna to have to do quite a bit of testing um, so now you may be thinking okay okay so so what's the actual format of these files so in your CFG underground triggers file basically it starts off with a squiggly left bracket triggers and then you've got <coughs> a, uh, a square left bracket and that's when you then have the different types of triggers so that's outer trigger and then you've got a transitional trigger there and you'll notice that as long as it's a trigger with another one after it, you've got a comma after it. And then we've got another, um, that's a uh, inner trigger there. You can see the accommodation is zero. We've got loads and loads of inner triggers here. And then what we've got here is this is the transitional trigger that takes you back up the steps um, to outside at the, the bunker at Dambog. And that finishes there and then we've got a right square bracket and a right squiggly bracket and that's the right format obviously highly recommend when you do start editing these JSONs that you use an online JSON formatter in fact I'll put a link to one in the description below the video so you're now saying okay Rob so <coughs> how do you how do you build where these um, coordinates are going to be and where these orientations are going to be and where these sizes are going to be well, <laughs> this is where it gets a little bit tricky, and this is where, again, the experimentation comes in. Now, what I did was basically I laid out everything in Daisy Editor. Right, now I'm not in Daisy Editor now, but I was, went in Daisy Editor, and I put a fruit where I wanted the center of the boxes to be. So this apple, this is the center of where I wanted my uh, outer trigger to be. And then this pear, that was where I wanted the center of my transitional trigger to be. And then that pumpkin there that you can see there, that's where the inner trigger would be. 
and then what I did was I put boxes down where I wanted the outside of the rectangles to go and then I put another box down at the orientation that I wanted the boxes to be at so that I would have my width uh, length and I would have my orientation so that's why for example in this middle one I'm using these um, uh, these wardrobes here to, to do the same thing now however I don't think I've got it completely right because I have got some um, uh, spillover of some of the areas into the other areas means that this doesn't work exactly perfectly as it would and also I definitely haven't got enough breadcrumbs as you go through this area for it to really smoothly change from you know bright to completely black it's not too bad if you if you're running through it but if you're going slowly it is almost like someone's uh, flipping a light switch off which isn't the way I want to do it um, <coughs> now when you're in daisy editor all you need to do is highlight an item and press P and that will copy its coordinates and a load of other stuff to the clipboard but you can then paste that into a um, uh, an open um, text document and then just copy the, the, the coordinates of the item um, and also when you're in daisy editor if you spawn in a range finder into your character's hand you can use the range finder just to aim it at things and work out your your length so if I wanted to learn work out how long this um, rectangle would be for the transitional trigger I could stand here with a range finder point it at that um, wardrobe there and that would give me the the distance in meters and that kind of gives you a starting point then um, to then create your CFG or your additions to your CFG underground triggers so that's my first trigger there as you can see with the position the orientation again I'm not quite sure whether I've got it right but I've got it at 292 our combination one and then this middle bit this is my transitional trigger so we've got our overall position overall size and we've got where the breadcrumbs are with the different eye accommodations and then we've got our final inner um, trigger there which takes us down to zero and then we've got our closing brackets to finish it off so this is a very exciting addition to daisy but i can't really stress enough um, the fact that you know this works on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox uh, consoles, but it will take, I think, quite a lot of fiddling to get the exact way you want it to work correctly, <coughs> in a way that won't break immersion for your players on your server. Um, and hopefully, maybe even someone like Implement Dab in the Daisy Editor will create a, a mod which will allow us to see the outlines of the trigger areas, the rectangles. Um, in real time, a bit like a hitbox, so we can actually see it instead of having to lay out things like I've done here to try and figure them out. So, in the description below this video, you'll see a link to Bohemian Interactive's GitHub, uh, sorry, Bohemian Interactive's wiki about CFG um, uh, underground triggers. Um, as I say, slowly read through that, think about everything in terms of rectangles, that really helped me. Play around on your local server, spawning things in and playing around with with you know where these triggers kind of take into effect um, and do a bit of experimentation um, and you know and have a bit of fun with it um, and uh, obviously do you're going to need to do quite a little quite a lot of um, uh, fine tuning as well so there we go hopefully you found this useful hopefully I've started your journey towards understanding CFG effect area uh, underground triggers and uh, if you've got any questions or comments put them down below thank you very much and I'll see you again soon Thank <laughs> you.